And you see the box, you know what's happening. Hey there folks, I am the Mighty Plantain. Thanks for checking out this video. And for those of you who haven't put it together, we have Stone's 12 Days of IPAs mix pack here. Oh, 12 Days of IPA. I keep putting the S on there. And um, we're doing all 12 tonight. Yep, we are doing another marathon beer review. This is the second one this year because I actually managed to get a hold of um, Clown Juice's 12 Beers of Christmas this year, which was much more widely available in Maine than it was last year. Thanks, guys. Really glad to see that. But anyway, uh, yeah, Stone's 12 Days of IPA. I'm also going to keep an eye out for some other winter packs. Some other folks have asked me to do some. I'm, I'm trying, but <laughs> it ain't easy keeping up with all this shit that I want to do. Um, <clears throat> so i got to prioritize. And tonight's priority this weekend is to do the Stone 12 pack. So what we have is regular Stone IPA, uh, Stone's Delicious IPA, Tangerine Express Hazy IPA, Scorpion Bowl IPA, Fear Movie Lions, FML, Hazy Double IPA, Ruination, Double IPA 2.0, uh, Grapefruit Slam IPA, Hazy IPA, Cloud Gazer Hazy IPA, Heavenly Haze IPA, Japanese Green Tea IPA, and capping it off, Sublimely Self-Righteous Black IPA. I love that one. Now, I think only a few of these are different from last year's 12-pack. Uh, maybe two or three of them. I'd have to look it up, and I'm not doing that right now. But we're going to drink them in the order that they are on the, the box. Um, I'm not going to go getting all fancy and trying to do uh, ABV and IBUs and stuff like that, because technically I should go from... Yeah, honestly, these are all so hoppy that I should probably just go from the higher ABV to the lower. That way, as I progress through the evening, I'm not getting more drunk. I'm actually, well, I am getting more drunk, but I'm consuming less at a time. Anyway, you get the idea. But uh, and the same thing goes for the IBUs. With hobby beers, you want to go from your higher IBU, your <laughs> lower IBUs to your higher IBUs because they can burn out your taste buds pretty quick. Um, and you don't want to wreck them completely. But... I'm just going to do some very thorough cleansing with water in between of these beers. And we're going to try and get through all 12 of them tonight. When I did the Clown Shoes one, I started at 9 p.m. We are at quarter till 8, so I have a little bit of extra time here. It's going to be key. Pacing is going to be key. Staying hydrated is going, hydrated is going to be key. Want an, an extra reason to cleanse with water in between beers. And I'll probably stop for a snack or two at some point. With the clown shoes, it was just a simple bowl of ramen. It kept me cruising. I got leftover pizza, leftover pork fried rice in the fridge. I've got chili cheese and chips. I've got I got all the stuff that keeps me fat in the house tonight. So anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get into the first beer. Stone IPA. Still getting the hang of this new bottle opener. All right, now there are some really awesome things on the back of these bottles. I will try to run through them very quickly because reading the stone bottles is almost as fun as drinking them. Gargoyle. Noun. Gargoyles are historically known as protectors against evil spirits. Since the beginning, our stone gargoyle has represented our ceaseless quest to create the most awesome beers imaginable. Think of the gargoyle as the big friend that's got your back. Ever vigilant, ever watchful, and ever your humble servant. So, it's going to be interesting watching me try to drink those. <laughs> First beer in, I haven't even started yet. Watching me try to read those as coherently as that as I get more drunk throughout the evening. So, look at that. This Stone's Basic IPA. Well, I guess basic isn't really the word for it, but it is their, their base IPA. Let's go with that. Look at how freaking bubbly that is. That's very effervescent. Slightly hazy, even without being a hazy IPA. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen so a really clear IPA. I think the last one I saw was Island Dog Brewing in Portland. Had a, had a regular IPA. It was nice and clear without any haze. And you don't need haze to be a good IPA. All right, I'm not going to get off on that track. 
I'm going to get sidetracked later anyway. But just a nice, beautiful, golden yellow color to that beer. It's got a crisp aroma to it. Slightly hoppy bitterness coming through and the, the, the aroma as well. Man, I can't speak tonight. Yeah, just a nice, crisp, slightly hoppy aroma. A bit of a medium light mouthfeel. Hmm. Oh, yeah, this one is 6.9% ABV. Just in addition to just having like a general beeriness about it, um, and that, that crisp poppy flavor, it's, I don't know, I'm getting... Every time I think I'm getting a hint of a specific hoppy ester, like something earthy or floral or, or piney or citrusy, it just kind of runs away on me and then it just blends into that overall hoppy bitterness. So I'm just going to say this is a really well-rounded, plain old, as plain as stone gets, IPA. Easy drinking, nothing too crazy or off the wall. I'm going to hit this with a three and a half out of five. And I'll try to say this only once during the video, but a three and a half out of five is an above average rating because two and a half would put you on an average. So three and a half is pretty significantly above average beer. This one's really good. And I never turn them down. Um, Stone makes a great IPA. So I'm going to finish this one up and then we're going to move on to the, uh, the delicious IPA. I think everything in this box is delicious, actually. Can't say that about. I think the grapefruit slam might be new to me, and the Japanese green tea, maybe the never ending haze. Pardon. But all the ones I've had are delicious. Ooh, excuse me. All right. Finish this beer cleanse with water, and then we're going to do the, uh, the delicious IPA. All right. Next up is delicious IPA. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't have a huge write-up about the beer. It just says um, citrusy lemon drop hops, tropical El Dorado hops, 7.7% ABV, and gluten reduced. Not gluten free, but gluten reduced. Uh, crafted to reduce gluten, this beer was fermented from barley, a grain containing gluten, and crafted to reduce gluten. The gluten content of this beer cannot be verified, and this beer may contain gluten. There might be gluten in it, by the way, but they tried to get rid of it. That's, that's kind of what we're getting at. All right. I'm not worried about it because I uh, do not have a gluten sensitivity at all, much less an allergy, so very fizzy sounding. I can smell it from here. Just a general hoppy bitterness. Similar to the regular IPA, somewhat hazier, a little bit darker, more of an orangish color to the yellow, but way less effervescent. There's a lot fewer bubbles coming up from down there. Yes, I'm going to try not to be so mouthy about the next few and get through them real quick for you. I know this video is probably going to be at least an hour and a half long anyway. See, I'm getting off track again already. Just slightly hoppy bitterness to it, but it, it almost has like a juicy aroma. Like a, like a fresh bottle of apple juice, kind of. More bitter than that, but, you know. Yeah, just like a... Hmm. It's another nice medium light mouthfeel beer. And overall, 
hoppy bitterness with a bit of a juiciness to it and a citrusy finish. I'm getting hints of pine as well. Um, something else I'll try to only mention once that I am more keyed towards citrus and pine esters and hops, so I pick up on those more than I do anything else. Um, but yeah, it's a nice overall hoppy bitter beer. A little bit of a citrusy finish to it. Maybe some pininess creeping through as well. I'm going to hit this one with a three and a half out of five as well. It's not as crisp as the last one, but definitely just as easy to drink. We'll finish this one off. We're going to move up to uh, Tangerine Express next. All right, next up, Tangerine Express. This one's coming in at 6.7% ABV. Burp. Pardon. Hazy IPA. A tropical hazy IPA with tangerine and pineapple. This creation's uniquely hazy appearance is a credit to the glorious whole tangerine puree in every batch. Using the whole fruit allows us to harness every bit of its natural depth of character. Pithy, crisp bitterness complements its distinct juicy citrus. Just the right amount of pineapple and, this being stone, a whole lot of hops round off this beer in an amazingly hazily, citrusy, tasty paradise of flavors and aromas. Having some issues with this frickin' bottle opener. It looks amazing, but it's having trouble gripping. Oh, yeah, hazy, all right, and it's definitely got some particulates in there. That is a, a heavily flocculent beer. A lot of that haze is due to the particles, but it does look quite juicy. Uh, actually darker than the last one. Less effervescent. I'm not seeing as many bubbles coming up through there, but ugh, the flocks. The flocks are getting me nuts, and... If you've seen any of my videos with these types of beers before, you'll know I'm about to go off on a tangent, and I'll try to keep it short. I have never been a fan of seeing particulates in my beverages, and I'm getting used to it because I'm realizing that you don't have that texture most of the time with beers, and it adds to the flavor, yes, in certain regards, but it's just visually off-putting to me, and I don't, I don't fucking like it. That's all I'm going to say about it for now. Like I said, I'm getting better about it, and I realize that it doesn't necessarily impact the character of the beer, and unless it's an extreme case of it, you're not actually going to be, like, chewing chunks. But visually, it doesn't work for me. Huh. I mean, I'm getting a slight hint of tangerine. Maybe an overall citrusiness in the aroma, perhaps a hint of pineapple, but mostly just a, a light, sweet, citrusy aroma, which again, I can put, I can put my finger on and say it's tangerine. Not bad. I'm going to try not to take points away for it from the for the visual thing, but I, if I remember right, this happened with me with Tangerine Express before. I'm getting hints of citrusy fruit, a bit of tangerine, that pith that they're talking about. Um, it's the, the white fleshy part of any citrus fruit that's between the skin and the actual fruit fruit. Um, I can never remember it when I'm trying to, but reading it on the label, I know exactly what they're talking about. Um, it's got a bitter flavor to it as well, which is why we typically peel as much of that off of the fruit as we can. Well, some people, myself included, peel as much of that off of the fruit as we can before eating it. Um, it but it, it does have a, a distinctly different 
bitterness than hops do, but in this case, it's kind of working with it. So, I'm getting hints of tangerine, I'm getting hints, lighter hints of pineapple, an overall hoppy bitterness. It's got a nice uh, medium mouth feel, a little heavier than the last two. Um, but the fruitiness and the hoppiness just aren't quite working as well for me as I thought they would. I'm hitting this with a three out of five. It's not bad. It's not blowing me away, but um, I'm just not as in, enthused by it as I would be by the first two IPAs or, or other IPAs in general. So again, a three out of five, still slightly above average, but not... <sighs> oh, better stop that. I should have loaded up an energy drink before drinking. I forgot to do that this afternoon, this morning. Oops. Hopefully I don't pay for it later. Anyway, not bad. Not turning me on that much, but still not one I'd be likely to turn down. I just would probably gravitate towards a different beer instead. Um, so three out of five on Tangerine Express. Going to finish this up. And we're going to move on to, ooh, Scorpion Bowl. <laughs> All right, it was uh, quarter after eight when I started. It is now, I'm sorry, quarter until eight. And it is now 8.54. So we're just over an hour in and three beers deep. That's not necessarily a maintainable pace, but it's a start. We will be slowing down. Case in point, I don't know. Actually, this is lower than the uh, lower than the second one, more than the last one. All right, Scorpion Bowl IPA, a punch to the stinger. For this ale to have landed in your hands, it has survived a rather exotic journey. It began, as these things do, far, far away in an untamed land where desert I desert isles and seafaring travelers caravans. Evering traders, caravans alike, evoke the dreams, evoke dreams of purple sands and mysterious flora, swallowed and hidden by fathom upon fathom of never-ending sea. And so it was there, where the ancient ritual drums could be heard past the tropic sands and deep in the jungle, that we found this recipe sealed with a scorpion's kiss. Midnight poetry whispered upon whispered on the breeze of this mystical libation. My moon and my sun, my fairest one, a liquid dream of delight to awaken in the night. It is also warned, however, that betwixt the ripples of the scorpion bowl mingled midway on the waves, one can hear the wailing of a lamenting lover, lost to the ancestral voices, measureless to mankind, and here you stand, Seeking kismet, answering love's command. You've gotten this far and find yourself wondering if scorpions indeed do kiss. As true as the stars and the moon, yes, yes, they do. With bittersweet tropical poetry, they kiss just for you. I think I've read that on camera at least three times now, including this one. I probably stumble on the same places each time. Anyway. Smells tropical from the very get go. Burp. Whew. Pardon. Burp. Slightly hazy, slightly effervescent. It does have a bit of a ah, hiccups are trying to come through. We don't want that does have a bit of a glow about it. It's nice, got a nice light yellow color down here, but it does get to a bit of a, a coppery orangish color up here where it gets thicker. Yeah, a bit of a tropical aroma to it, slightly fruity, maybe a hint of coconut. I don't think there's actually any coconut in it, but just has that coconutty aroma with a bit of fruity sweetness, undertones of hoppiness. It does have a lovely aroma. I've always noted that. 
the sphere smells amazing and I could sit here smelling it all night. It's got a nice medium mouthfeel. Up front, nice, slightly sweet, tropical fruity flavor. Again, maybe hints of coconut, but I'm, it just could be certain hop esters or the image of tropical stuff making me think of coconut. Mm -hmm. But it does fade to a nice overall hoppy bitterness. I'm getting hints of different esters, pine, citrus, a little earthy, a little floral, maybe slightly dank. It's a really complex, well put together IPA. I think I've said this about it before. Tonight it's it's hitting me perfectly. Um, I'm hitting this with a five out of five. I'm always turned on by the Scorpion Bowl IPA. Maybe it's because it brings back memories of um, hanging out at a Chinese restaurant locally, um, Jade Island, with my buddies on the weekends and having a couple of volcano bowls. But this beer just really does it. It's well put together. I love the tropical flavor with the hoppy taste to it. I can't put my finger on anything in particular that makes me say wow about it other than the fact that I just really like it from start to finish and I am loving it. So full on five out of five for me for a Scorpion Bowl IPA. I'm going to finish this one up. It's 7.5% uh, ABV, by the way. I think I mentioned that once. Then we're going to move on to FML, Fear Movie Lions. All right, it is now, uh, yeah, I was going to say, it might as well be 10 o'clock, 9.57 p.m., and we are four beers deep. Um, <laughs> see the yawns, that's bad. I should probably get some caffeine into my system. Um, one thing I was looking at, I'm going to try and keep this short. Um, unlike the Clown Shoes pack, this does not have a lot of breaks built in. Um, running down through the ABVs, these are all like over 7. 6.9, 7.7, 6.7, 7 7.5. Those are the four we've done so far. We're about to do 8.5% Fear Movie Lions, then 8.5% Ruination, 8% Grapefruit Slam, 6.7% Hazy IPA, 7.5% Cloud Gazer. The one break built in here is Heavenly Haze, 4%. And then it's right back up to the Japanese Green Tea is 10%. And Sublimely Self-Righteous Black IPA is 8.7%. Well, the reason I say there's no breaks built in is, like I said, with the Clown Shoes Pack, there were a couple that were at least like around 5 and a couple that were under 5. This is just heavy hitters all around. Um, you might as well just say they're all 7%. 6 point, yeah, 6.9, 6.7. Yeah. With two of them being 6.7, you might as well just say they're 7% overall. With only one being at 4%. This pack has got some major ABVs involved. So... Um, I guess what I'm getting at is <sighs> he's going to start taking a little more time. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. <sighs> I'm going to be up later than I'm going to be tonight. But pacing these out is a smarter move than trying to guzzle them all down and then not making it. Um, we're only four beers deep and I might be grabbing a snack. I think I got seven deep in the clown shoes pack before I had to do that. So, all right, Fear Movie Lions, Hazy, double IPA. Again, what did I say? 8.5% ABV. There's a three meter by three meter square in our Richmond, Virginia brewery with these three words painted on it. What three words? Exactly. For the uninitiated, that's what three words? W-H-A-T-3, number three. W-O-R-D-S with the W's. Um, 
capitalized. It's a global addressing system to bring locations to the previously unlocatable. Inspired by the positive impact of this system, we decided to name this IPA after a three meter square in the brewery where it was created. Check it out. So now when someone says to you, what three words you can reply with your own answer. If it's fear movie lions, we'll see you there. Hmm. Okay. Something tells me that makes more sense if you've been to the brewery, which I hope to do someday. But we'll see. <sighs> I like to do a lot of things in my life, and traveling might not be at the top of the list right now. Damn, look at that. I, had, I did get more aggressive with the pour, though. Oof, that's got a couple of flex and flocks in it. It's got some particulates. It's slightly effervescent, quite hazy, but overall, a dark amber, amber copper, amber coppery colored beer. Um, I'm liking the look of it, except for those damn particulates. The chunks, the chunks do not fucking do it for me. <sighs> I've had this beer before though, so I know that, again, I'm gonna get past that. Overall, nice hoppy bitterness with a bit of a citrusy aroma. Maybe a hint of dankness in there. Like the pleasant smell of an old dirt floor basement. Hmm. Medium light mouth mouthfeel. It got me on the back end. Hmm. Medium light mouthfeel. Initially, there's this earthy hoppiness to it with an, a, like a tart, like a tart back end. And then after you swallow though, it comes back with this big punch of hoppy bitterness. I'm getting pine, a little bit of that earthiness coming back in some citrusy notes. Hmm. Yeah, I'm liking that. The fact that it's giving me a couple of hop esters that I don't usually get is impressing me. Not quite getting a wow reaction out of it, but just it's very, very good. Um, I'm going to hit this tonight with a four and a half out of five. Again, I, I don't know if I'm rating these beers the same as I have rated them in the past, and I'm probably rating them differently than I will in the future, because beer taste is subjective. It changes from individual to individual, and sometimes it changes from time to time with that particular individual. So yeah, Scorpion Bowl IPA, I'm pretty sure I've hit that with a five before, but maybe not consistently. Tonight, I think I may have rated FML either higher or lower, but tonight it's a four and a half out of five for me, basically because I'm getting that, that earthiness that I'm not used to, and it's overall just a great IPA. I'm not quite getting a wow reaction, but I'm getting, I'm getting significantly impressed by it. So um, we'll finish this one up and we'll move up on to Ruination. I had to pause for a second there. I didn't realize Ruination was next. I mean, I knew it, but apparently I forgot. Whew. Ruination, another 8.5% ABV, and that one's, well, we'll go into detail about it when we get to it next. All right. So we now have Ruination IPA now. This one's 8.5% ABV. So, <clears throat> Ruination Double IPA 2.0 Sans Filtre. It means it's unfiltered now. It used to be filtered. Always unbridled, now unfiltered. Oh, I guess I could have just read the description and skipped over my own commentary. 
<clears throat> this should provide the history lesson that I want to, so I'm going to go on. Stone Ruination IPA was the first full-time brewed and bottled West Coast double IPA on the planet. Oh, that I didn't necessarily know. As craft beer has evolved over the years, so too have techniques for maximizing hop flavors and aromas. When we updated this incarnation in 2015, we employed dry hopping and hop bursting to squeeze every last drop of piney, citrusy, tropical, punk, metal, and hard rock essence from the hops that give this beer its hugely assertive character. Now we've arrived at its newest evolutionary form by shoving it into the bottle unfiltered, aka sans filtre, and bringing it to you in its most excellently raw form. This beer has always been unbridled, now it's unfiltered. Now, ruination... The part they didn't get to here that I... Don't quote me on this, but I believe that it's one pound of hops per barrel is what they used to do, because Ruin 10, which is another iteration of this beer, was 10 pounds of hops per barrel, and it wound up being a, an intense IPA. But I'd have to check those numbers, and I'm not doing them right now, because this is beer number six in this pack, and they are hitting me pretty hard. It's 10.30, I think. Yep, 10.30 p.m. on the dot right now, actually, by the way. Um, so I am slowing my pace a bit, which again, is probably a good thing, but I should probably eat something after this, let's see what happens. Probably should have caffeinated as well, but I didn't do that either. Slightly flocculent. Quite hazy, not very effervescent. Um, you don't see any bubbles coming up from down there. I can see flecks and flocks and particulates just floating around in there. It almost looks a little oily as well. Oh, there's a few bubbles coming up along the edge here. Um, but it definitely has a dark, juicy look to it. It's more of a copper-colored beer with a lighter copper fading to yellow down here. Again, Ruination. Another one that I've always enjoyed, even when they went unfiltered, and you can see the, the chunks in it. Let's just say chunks. Particulates. <sighs> Smell like a lot of hops. Hop esters in there. I'm getting pine. I'm getting citrus. I am getting floral. Again, tropical. A bit of dankness. I'm getting a little bit of everything in the aroma. Medium heavy mouthfeel. It's got more body than the others that we've had so far. Yeah, that's a hot bomb, to be sure, but every sip is a little bit different. I'm getting pine, I'm getting citrus, I'm getting earthy, I'm getting floral notes, I'm getting dank notes, I'm getting grassy notes, I'm getting everything that I would expect from different types of hops, but I'm getting them in a rotating basis on my palate. And even as I sit here talking, the airflow over my palate is changing that flavor. And the next sip, I'm getting the same hop esters, but maybe in a different order. It's just dancing on my palate. It's good. Very good. Way too easy drinking at 8.5% ABV especially after some other heavier beers. 
I've always loved ruination. Because it is what it is. Ruination is fucking ruination for your palate. Uh, pardon. I've been drinking a good amount of water. Excuse me. In between each of these beers just to cleanse the palate. And ruination... Might be the one that ruins my palate tonight. And that's kind of the point behind it. Um, one quick aside here. <laughs> um, like I said, Ruination, I believe, has one pound of hops per barrel. Ruin 10, which is 10 times the hops of this beer. So, again, yeah, 10 pounds of hops per barrel. Again, my, my numbers might be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure that's the deal. But Ruin 10, again, is 10 times the hops of this beer. Ruin 10 is a really good way to inoculate your friends who aren't necessarily into IPAs at all or hoppy beers in general. Give them a bottle of Ruin 10, force them to drink the whole thing, after that experience, no beer is too hoppy for them, and they can't not handle it. They'll they'll fucking rally. They'll be like, "Oh, suddenly I appreciate all these IPAs you've been trying to turn me on to." Um, I did it to Boosh. Now I've done it to a couple of other people. Get yourself a bottle of Ruin Ten and ruin their palates, and then they'll come around. To all other IPAs. But if you can't get Ruin 10 because it's brewed occasionally, uh, Ruination is another good option to just blow somebody's palate completely away. And again, afterwards they will be opened up to more of the subtleties of your hoppier beers. So just a quick aside on that. Ruination as I believe always, it was a 5 out of 5 for me. Again, I may fluctuate, but tonight it's a 5 out of 5. I'm pretty sure I consistently rated at least close to a 5 out of 5, if not that full rating. So, it, it, In terms of the wow factor, it's, it's perfect. It's got every hop ester that I'd expect to get in a decent measure but not necessarily always in the same order with each sip. It changes as you drink it. That's amazing. So I'm going to finish it up. I might want to take my time with it. And we're going to move on to um, Grapefruit Slam IPA, which I don't believe I've had before. I think that'll be the first new one in this pack for me. But I'm not 100% sure. I could have had the Grapefruit Slam and just not um, remember it. <laughs> All right, so now we are past the halfway point, folks. Six beers down. Number seven here is Grapefruit Slam IPA. This is an 8% ABV beer. <laughs> Following two 8.5%. It's actually a step down, so... A zesty double IPA with grapefruit peel. We've made a hell of a lot of IPAs since 1996. Fuck this, they have. Some stick around for decades, some for a few years, and some are brief visits before becoming fond memories. This IPA was first released in the fall of 2014. I don't remember it for sure. Yet we've always found it hard to keep it in retirement, quote unquote. In its bitter, zesty grapefruit peel infusion creates a bright accent to notes of pine resin and fresh citrus, and has always been a major hit. Packing the usual yet definitively unusual punch, Stone Group Grapefruits Lamb <laughs> IPA is back for another round. Thanks to you. Hmm. So apparently, market demand drove the need to bring this beer out of quote-unquote retirement. So 
Let's check it. I can smell grapefruit from here, so. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute. Do I see what I think I see? Well, that's something else. Pine and citrus there. And again, two hop esters that I mostly heed towards. So, but <clears throat> here's the thing: it's less flocculent. Oh, I thought it poured cleaner than that, but it definitely is still hazy. It's quite hazy. Um, the f the particulates are so fine; I can see them, but they're contributing more towards a hazy appearance than a particulate appearance, but I can definitely still see that the haziness is caused by particulates. Well, if you can make sense of that, then you're right along with me. Anyway, it's definitely got a nice amber, copper, let's call it copper, copper to bronze color, and this nice light yellowish hue at the bottom. Let's call it copper towards bronze. Slightly effervescent, but definitely, <clears throat> definitely has particulates floating in it that contributes towards the hazy appearance. I am getting hugely citrus notes out of the aroma, and it would help if I didn't dip my fucking nose right in it. That was fucking brilliant, let me tell you. Well, if there was ever an indication I needed to slow the fuck down, that's that. Hmm. Anyway. I actually had a medium light mouthfeel. It's going down easier than the other beer in the last couple. Um, hmm. Something about it. I mean, a nice medium mouthfeel. Um, it's got like a roasty character to it, which is overshadowed by the hoppiness, but there's still a bit of roastiness there. <clears throat> the hoppiness definitely has citrusy notes and piney notes. But distinctly citrusy with the grapefruit being forward. Lots of gas coming up. There's, in addition to the roastiness, there's an almost, ooh, the hell, the hiccups are trying to break through. And they're competing with the burps, and this is not fucking cool. It sucks. But that, There's a um, there's an odd metallic flavor to it. It's earthy hop notes, I'm sure, that's contributing to that. But everything is a little bit of grassiness. But there's this metallic flavor, which isn't unpleasant, it's just different, and I'm appreciating it. I'm hitting this one with a four out of five. It's not giving me anything that I haven't picked up on in other beers before, but it's definitely 
giving me something a little different, something unusual, something that I don't get all the time. Um, it's not giving me that 100% wow, blown away factor, or the four and a half out of five for being somewhat distinctly unique, but it is definitely an unexpected twist to the flavor and something that I don't get all the time. So again, four out of five, throwing that down there, right fruit slam. Definitely an interesting and different IPA. I'm gonna finish this one up. I should probably eat something at this point because we're getting a little off track here. And then we'll uh, kick back in with Stone's Hazy IPA. By the way, Grapefruit Slam, 8% ABV. I don't think I mentioned that in here. Hazy is a 6.7%, so we're taking a step down. Not by much, but maybe enough to buy me a reprieve here. Hmm. Yeah, it's 10 minutes till midnight, so... I know, I still have five beers to go, but I should slow down more than I have. This is bad pacing. Anyway, all right, next up, Stone's Hazy IPA. We'll check in on the time then. All right, number eight. It's just plain old Hazy IPA. An amazingly Hazy IPA, 6.7% ABV. Oh. So we get a fucking break here, because um, 7.5, 8.5, 8.5, 5, is actually kind of a step down. That's cool. <clears throat> the hiccups are trying to break through here, suddenly. Second, I turned the camera on, so I'm trying to tamp them down. Stone Hazy IPA, an amazingly hazy IPA. IPAs were once considered an extreme style. Yeah, they were. Only for hardcore beer nerds like, say, us. Hmm. Honestly, sometimes they still are. There's the stereotypical IPA lover. It's not entirely wrong. It is sometimes wrong. Anyway, today we're stoked to see IPA is the most popular style of craft beer in the world. Yes, it is. To the detriment of the style. There's some really shitty IPAs out there and 90%. Better than 50% of what you'll find are just run-of-the-mill IPAs where somebody took their basic beer and tossed a bunch of hops in it to hop it up and make it an IPA. And quite proud of our role in getting it there. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. There's no denying juicy, hazy IPAs like this one have fueled that popularity. With stone hazy IPA, we say, hell yeah, embrace the evolution. Okay, so I, I kind of talked about this a minute ago, but I'm going to expand on it a bit more. But Yeah. IPAs were kind of the fringe thing. They were kind of an extreme beer style, and now they're pretty commonplace. Like I said, it's kind of the detriment of the style. I mean, there's a lot of really solid IPAs out there, but then there's a lot of run-of-the-mill fucking beers that just classify themselves as IPAs to meet the style requirements. And I mentioned before, some people think hazy IPAs are the only IPAs out there, but they don't all have to be hazy to be good. So let's celebrate the hopheads, but let's not go fucking overboard. Let's not take these basic bitch motherfuckers who think that all hoppy beers are good and turn them into fucking gods. We've seen them all. Ugh. IPAs are delicious. But do not fucking turn yourself into some kind of fucking demigod 
just because you can handle them. I mean, look at me wrong. I'm talking about Stone Ruin 10, and I love it, but... I don't pretend I'm better than anybody just because I can drink it. I happen to be a hophead. Does not define my personality or make me superior in any way. Because, as I said before, beer taste is subjective. Just because I love and enjoy and can handle extremely hoppy beers doesn't mean that everybody feels the same about them. And I respect that. So, you're not a pussy if you can't drink hoppy beers. You just don't like what I like. Here we go. <clears throat> that is quite hazy and juicy and fairly effervescent. There's a lot of very, very fine particulates in that, but it is a very light, light yellow color that darkens to a mm, bit of an orangish hue, but it's mostly still just a yellow beer. Not quite honey colored, but very yellow. Hmm. Citrusy, of course. I'm going to pick up on citrus. Quite citrusy. All I'm getting is citrus. Hmm. Okay. Nice medium mouthfeel. There's a bit of earthy dankness to it, which is nice. I don't always get that from hoppy beers. Big citrusy aroma. Earthy, slightly dank grassiness in the front. Finishes with a piney floral finish. Very nice. Not what I expected. Quite solid. Good tasting IPA and giving me a few esters that I am not used to picking up on, so it's definitely got my attention. I'm hitting this one with a 4 out of 5. Not going, wow, I'm not finding it uniquely pleasant. I'm just finding it different than what I'm used to and very good. Easy to drink. Clean finish. Crisp. <sighs> Even with that medium mouthfeel, it's easy to go down. So, yeah. <sighs> Damn. Need to wake the fuck up. Four out of five. Right now, we're sitting at uh, 1.50 a.m. So it's 2 a.m. and we've got... Four whole beers to go. Will we make it before 3 a.m.? Probably not this time, but, you know, we'll see. Finishing up Hazy IPA, and we will move on to Stone's Cloud Gazer Hazy IPA. Oh, shit, I didn't read the... Yeah, I did. Alright, see? See? See what all this booze is doing? It's going straight to my head. I'm forgetting shit. Alright, Cloud Day Gazer IPA is next. And that one's at 7.5%. This one was at 6.7%. So. That's right. It did mention it's kind of a break. So, Alright. Four more. We're going to get to them tonight. Soon. Not too soon soon. Oh, all right. So we're at about 2.45 a.m. Not quite three in the morning. And yeah, this pack is definitely going to take longer than the last one. It did not off for a second or two there, um, but you know, not for too long. We're looking at Cloud Gazer Hazy IPA. This one's at seven and a half percent ABV. 
Sky High Haze. For a long time, the idea of haze obscuring an IPA's appearance was frowned upon. Ah, I mentioned this before. Nowadays, we're inclined to stare right into the haze and let the haze stare back. It's all about that magically murky golden glow. This IPA is brewed with a trifecta of barley, oats, and wheat to lock in the haze, while aromas of stone fruit and citrus billow forth from a mosaic and citra hops. Lean back and lose yourself in the clouds. <sighs> mm, lack of sleep catching up with me. In addition to the nodding off earlier. Probably should have downed some caffeine before starting this, but by the time I got started, it was a little late in the game to really think about it. Then snacking on some Chex Party Mix throughout the whole thing. I'm not quite hungry enough to throw a meal in there, but you know. Belly's full to slow this stuff down. Obviously, it ain't 100% effective, but oh, look at the yellowish color on that. Very hazy. I am seeing particulates in there and a few bubbles coming up from the bottom. That is a very, very cloudy, hazy IPA with a light yellowish color. Well, yeah, the, the hazy thing is long-standing argument among IPA lovers. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you can have a clear IPA that's still delicious. It doesn't have to be hazy to be good. Mm. <sighs> Pardon. But not everybody agrees. Particulars don't necessarily make a good IPA, but they don't make a bad one either. Lightly crisp, hoppy aroma. Like I'm not getting any um, really heavy, heavy hoppy bitterness. It's just kind of there. There's like this crisp, fresh, grassy note to it all. A hint of earthiness, but nothing too overwhelming in the aroma. That's good. Very clean and crisp. Not bad. There's a very underrated um, hoppy flavor to this one. Despite cleansing with water, my palate might be getting burnt out at this point, though. But, um... Very fresh. Light and crisp. That's really all I'm coming back with. Um, and then a hint of fruitiness. I'm honestly getting a lot of grassiness to this one. Um, most because of the fresh, crisp flavor. Yeah, hint of fruitiness, a little bit citrusy. Very smooth, very delicious, very good. Um, not quite standing out in any particular category. You know what, I'm gonna hit this with a four out of five. Mostly because of the grassy freshness that I'm getting from it. I'm not used to getting a lot of grassiness or earthiness from, from an IPA, but... Um, yeah, really, really solid. Not bad. We're going to finish this one up, hopefully without falling asleep again. And um, move from the 7.5%. Ooh, we get a mild break on the next one. Never Ending Haze is a 4% ABV on the, uh, versus the 7.5% on this one. And then we ramp it right back up again. So, anyway. 
Never Ending Haze is next. All right, we are solidly up to 3.15 in the morning. I tell you folks, I was, I was ready to film this one at 3.05, 10 minutes ago. Maybe at some point I'll turn my walk-in closet into a, a filming space, not quite a studio, but it's not going to be ideal, but at the very least, the fucking air conditioner slash AC unit won't be on directly the opposite wall from where I film. This thing kicks on, and on nights like tonight where it's freezing as fuck outside, and, or, you know, during the summer where it's really, really warm, I have to wait 10 minutes for it to finish running because it is so fucking loud. I don't want to film while it's running. So anyway, it's right there on that wall. <sighs> Sat down to film and the heat kicked in. Boom. Uh, and I already turned it off once earlier tonight, so I'm not doing it again because it is cold in here and dry. As if you couldn't tell from my skin how dry the fucking air in this place is. That's just the whole estate at this point, anyway. All right, um, enough about that. Never Ending Haze IPA, limitless flavor. And again, Never Ending Haze is at 4% ABV, so we get a slight break for the high ABV beers here. There's a lot never ending about IPAs around Stone, beginning with Stone IPA being one of the very first and most popular West Coast style IPAs on the planet. Yep. To our, earth, to our celebrated explorations of double IPAs, session IPAs, fruited IPAs, and ultra-fresh triple IPAs, <sighs> they're an integral part of our legacy. Plus, there's the oft-said, but not really true, but not actually true, comments from some that all Stone does is IPAs. No, they don't. They do a lot of other shit, too. I mean... They are very IPA heavy in their catalog, but yes, we may love them passionately and perpetually be on a quest for IPA nirvana, but this particular one actually happened onto the scene to aid in your noble pursuit of never-ending good times. Yeah, Stone does a very IPA heavy catalog, but they are good at doing stouts. Um... Well, Arrogant Bastard Ale wound up becoming its own brewery because of the different iterations of ne Elegant Bastard. Arrogant Bastard that's out there. I know, Arrogant, Elegant, whatever. I think Elegant Bastard's actually the, the knockoff clone recipe that's sold by uh, Northern Brewing, but... Yeah, yeah, we're getting late into it and I'm getting a little punchy here. The next one being at 10% ABV is not going to help me. So we'll probably try to rocket, rocket these two down. Three, because we haven't started this one yet. That is the first hazy IPA so far that I've seen tonight that I can remember. It does not look like a bunch of particulates. It just looks like a cloudy fucking beer. So that it's either really fine particulates or the haze is in the beer itself. Or, ooh, excuse me. Quite light yellow down there, where the lights are really getting through, but it tends to darken quickly into a very honey colored beer, very dark honey color. Not very many bubbles coming up from underneath, so not too effervescent. There come the hiccups trying to break through again. Hint of a tropical citrusy fruit aroma, maybe mango, or something similar. Maybe a little, a little bit of sweaty workout shirt. I, sorry, that's just kind of what I'm getting, but very faintly. Hmm. Oh, well, 
I'm going to say it's got a nice medium light mouthfeel. Slightly oily, but not too bad. Up front, it's got like this weird, cool crispness to it. As you swallow, a hint of fruitiness. And then just this mild burst of hoppiness. There's several different characters all at once. Um, I mean, if I really concentrate hard, I'm getting hints of pine and citrus. And some earthiness, some grassiness, a little hint of dankness. I like this weird undertone of um, slightly overripe fruit. I know I mentioned sweaty gym shirt in the aroma and slightly overripe fruit in the, the flavor. Those both sound bad, but it's not bad overall. <sighs> Damn. I mean, it's remarkably easy to drink, coming down very smooth. But if you really concentrate on it, those two slightly borderline unpleasant aroma and flavors kick in. That's not bad. But again, really easy to drink. Um, I'm gonna hit this with a three out of five. Just there's there's some some slightly negative tones creeping in there, but not enough to. Overpower the generally pleasant experience of this beer and um, not to the point where it's undrinkable, so yeah. A little odd, a little unusual, but not bad. Good overall. Just not 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 tripping my trigger quite as much as some of the others in the pack, so just slightly, slightly above average. All right, we're going to finish this one off probably faster than the others, maybe. I don't know. We're going to see. Hopefully I don't nod off in the meantime and the heat doesn't kick in. That'll fucking put us a little behind. Not that we're not going to finish this before fucking 4.30 in the morning anyway. But um, it is what it is. All right. Uh, yeah. Different haze. That's my take on it. We'll finish this up and then uh, move on to the... Japanese green tea IPA at 10% APV. That's going to kick my ass. Pretty good at this point, too. All right. Oh, the penultimate beer in this pack. We have Stone. Oh, look. I think this is a collaboration. I see Baird and Ishii on here. This is their Japanese green tea IPA, brewed with green tea, 10% ABV, holy shit. Yeah, I think this is a collaboration. All right, yeah, yeah. First brewed in 2011, huh, guess I missed it, maybe, I can't remember. This IPA is something truly magnificent, unique, and well worth brewing again. Whole leaf green tea adds a gentle accent to the blend of northern and southern hemisphere hops in this recipe, and our fans have been asking, some demanding, for its bright herbaceousness to make a return for years. To have such an innovative creation be so fervently enjoyed by nearly everyone who tries it, there's nothing better, if you ask us. When the time inevitably comes to ask us for another release, just say, Muipai. I'll have another. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. M-O-U-I-P-P-A-I. Muipai. I don't speak Japanese, so 
just guessing that I'm mangling the pronunciation of that. I'm also assuming that it's Japanese. So. Close here. Oh, it's got an interesting, interesting color. Slightly coppery, slightly orangish. Can't quite put my finger on what it is. It looks a little greasy. Looks a little oily. Definitely has some fine particulates suspended in there. They're not moving around much. Not very effervescent. Don't have a lot of um, a lot of motion. Brownie in motion. Brownie in motion. Anyway. <clears throat> good looking beer. Ooh, smells like tea from back here. Oh, now that's interesting. I'm getting an aroma of fresh tea leaves. Followed up by hints of hobbiness. There's a bit of sweetness in there, maybe. Bit of sweetness. I know that green tea isn't typically sweet unless you add sweeteners to it, but I'm I'm still getting a hint of like like a natural sweetness aroma, which is interesting. It actually smells fresh and crisp too. Hmm. It's got a bit of a medium mouth feel. And that hint of oiliness that I was seeing in the appearance actually continues into the into the mouthfeel of the beer. <sighs> Definitely a ten percent ABV. Um, Stone is usually pretty good at covering up or blending that high ABV booziness into their beers. This one, it's definitely there. I mean, it's in the double digits, so. You're going to pick up on the booziness at some point. <clears throat> Hint of sweetness on the tip of the tongue. As it first hits you. Huh. It's got a different interesting flavor and there, there's definitely some distinct hoppiness in there um good blend of different hoppy esters i'm not particularly particularly picking up on a specific one <clears throat> Whew, excuse me just an overall hoppy bitterness but there is that that brood like tea flavor and I can't necessarily describe it or put my finger on it. It's like this fresh leafy tea flavor in there. Um, the slight booziness is, is kind of fading to the background as the hoppiness kicks in as well as that brewed tea flavor. <sighs> it's different. The brood tea and the hops are just kind of blending together to make this interesting melding of the two types of things. With neither one being predominant, it's um, and the flavors are kind of dancing on my tongue back and forth. Again, there's a weird hint of sweetness. It's good. It's good and it's different. It's not quite blowing me away with this wow or profoundly different reaction. I've, I've had a couple of beers that were brewed with Tiesta tea, uh, local stuff from Shipyard Brewing, before that have a similar interaction of the tea and the hops and the other beer flavors. <sighs> I did not intend to do a full-on yawn there. So it's not quite... 100% unique or different, but it's definitely different. Um, 
I'm hit this with a four and a half out of five. Just because I'm not quite getting that wow reaction or that overwhelmingly different impression. But the fact of the matter is, it's definitely different. It's not something that I see every day. It's not 100% unique either. Um, but, god damn, it's as close to perfect or a wow reaction as I can possibly get without quite being there. So yeah, four and a half out of five. Damn good. Would come back to it again. I'm gonna finish this up. Should probably take my time with it and then... <sighs> to close out the pack, we have Sublimely Self-Righteous Black IPA. Mm. I've been looking forward to that one all night. And day. And then the next night. And day. We technically only crossed the threshold into tomorrow morning, so I'll say all night and day. Anyway, sublimely self-righteous black IPA is next. All right, 4.15 a.m. I was ready to do this at 4.05. Yes, I relaxed a little bit on the last one, but... Uh, yeah, quarter after four in the morning. And here we are. <laughs> it go ten minutes ago, but the fucking AC, or the AC, the heat kicked on. I had to wait ten fucking minutes at least for it to finish its cycle. I don't remember. Here we are. Stone Sublimely Self-Righteous Black IPA, 8.7% ABV. This one's Always been a favorite of mine. First brewed briefly in 2007 as Stone 11th Anniversary Ale, this beer was an instant hit. We loved everything about it and missed it terribly when it was gone. So after long months full of serious jonesing, we brought it back full time as Stone Sublimely Self Righteous Black IPA. It had a great run, but eventually black IPAs fell out of favor. When when the fuck did black IPAs fall out of favor? I've always loved them. Um, and this dark, dank beauty headed to retirement. Alas, such are the vagaries of craft beer. Cure return of the serious jonesing, like really serious, on a nearly daily basis. Since then, our fans have reminded us of the inevitable, in, indelible <laughs> impression this beer left on them. <clears throat> so an acknowledgement of all the righteousness still in the world, in this beer, and in your impeccable taste, we offer it up once again with its original artwork by Edson Ruiz who also contributed to our Stone IPA guest art series. Be forewarned, this is a limited re-release. Enjoy now, Jones later. Remind yourself, it's better than none at all. Or better yet, surprise the hell out of us and buy the crap out of this release, forcing us to bring it back once again. We won't complain. Oh, son of a bitch. Long night. Long night, folks. I don't know when the hell black IPAs fell out of favor, but I have always loved them. And this is no different. Man. It's got a creamy look to it as it pours out. And black IPA is right. There's a little bit of brownness to the edge of the glass where the light is kind of getting through, but mostly black on black. And I'm not putting this quite as close to the camera as the others because I'm afraid of knocking over this bowling pin configuration. And I'm going on a slightly reverse bowling pin configuration, but whatever. Not very many bubbles showing up. 
And as far as I can tell, it's clear, not hazy. But again. <sighs> Holy shit. With, all, with it being so dark and not a lot of light coming through, you can't really tell. <sighs> it's got an overall hoppy bitterness to the aroma, but there's also a roastiness in there from some kind of roasted malt. Uh, this one comes in at 8.7% ABV. Got a medium heavy mouth feel. Smooth and easy drinking, yet somehow crisp in the finish. Just a nice overall hoppy bitterness up front. Got a nice grainy bitterness and a complex grainy flavor. Uh, a little roasty, a little toasty. Slightly crisp and lighter, like weedy almost, um, with a hint of sweetness in there. And then it's just followed by this complete, pardon, amalgamation of hoppy bitterness with the roasted malt character. And that hoppy bitterness does resolve itself into mm, pardon, some earthy and pine notes. Honestly, earthy being predominant, which I'm not used to. Pine, <clears throat> not really any sort of citrus. Maybe some hints of floral and grassy, but... Just this overall perfect combination of a nice dark roasty beer with... A good hop profile. I mean, sublimely self righteous IPA just. <sighs> Excuse me. It is perfect in almost every regard. And as I believe I always give it, I'm hitting it with a five out of five. It's just really well put together, really well rounded, perfectly blended. It is fucking awesome and is a great way to finish off this pack. So yeah, it's going to be 4.30 by the time I wrap this up because I am running off of the mouth. But I think 4.30, I think it was 4.15 when I started, I don't know. 12 beers in one night, I'm a little fried folks, but... This is a really good pack. Again, it, it's very similar to last year's pack. I think there's two or three beers that are different, but overall, a lot of them are the same. Uh, there's a reason for that. I mean, when you've got a fucking hit, why mess with it? Oh, and tying it in and finishing it off with a sublimely self-righteous IPA. That's just fucking... Magic. I love this beer. In case you hadn't guessed. Um, anyway, that's just what I have to say about the pack. It's definitely a solid investment if you like IPAs. If you don't like IPAs, maybe grab <laughs> be something else. But hey, hit me up down in the comments with the email link. Love to hear what you have to say about this pack. While you're down there, don't forget to like and share this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. <clears throat> Till next time, folks. I'm going to fucking bed. Mm. Happy holidays. Fucking cheers. Thanks for tuning in.